Hello, knowledge seekers. In this episode of 20 Minute Books, we dive into Friend of a Friend, written by the acclaimed author and speaker, David Berkus. Released in 2018, this insightful book explores the untapped potential of networks that surround us, demonstrating that success in business and in life extends far beyond the act of traditional networking. Berkus, an associate professor of business studies with a prolific background, including regular contributions to the Harvard Business Review and numerous impactful TED Talks, brings a wealth of knowledge to the topic. Friend of a Friend is not just a guide to making new contacts. It's an exploration of how innovation, career development, and business success are intimately tied to the networks we cultivate and navigate. Berkus skillfully demystifies the networking process, showing that the key to leveraging our networks lies in understanding the complex tapestry of relationships that influence, direct, and advance our careers. This book is particularly beneficial for students of business and management, ambitious professionals seeking to elevate their career trajectory, and those feeling trapped in dead-end jobs looking for a way out. Join us as we uncover the strategies to unlock the hidden power of networking, making the most of the connections that surround us and transforming them into pathways for professional growth and success. Friend of a Friend, Understanding the Hidden Networks that Can Transform Your Life and Your Career. Introduction, Unlocking the Power of Your Networks, A Path to Success. Ever gaze at the stars of success and wonder what magic potion they possess that you don't? Well, it turns out that the secret ingredient might be simpler and more accessible than you think. It's about who you know, not just what you know. This eternal wisdom rings true across various dimensions of success, from career advancement to personal growth. And the exciting news? It's within your reach to make the most of it. David Berkus opens our eyes to the often overlooked troves of potential within our networks. Far from being static or finite, our networks hold the key to sprawling opportunities, innovation, and the realization of our deepest ambitions. Berkus demystifies the concept of networking, revealing it as an art and science that extends beyond mere socializing or exchanging business cards. It's about nurturing connections, understanding the complex web of relationships, and strategically expanding our circles. So, what's the catch? None, really, except for the need to shift your perspective and embrace a proactive approach to networking. Berkus offers up a treasure chest of strategies and insights that promise to not only reveal the hidden expanse of your current network, but also guide you on how to cultivate it meticulously. The journey involves tapping into the right contacts, enhancing the diversity and innovation of your circle, and ensuring its quality remains top-notch. Through captivating anecdotes and evidence-backed theories, we're invited to explore the science of networks. We'll uncover why the melody of a chart-topping hit isn't as crucial as you'd think, Learn the -the behind-the-scenes tactics that catapulted the four-hour workweek to the bestseller lists, and discover the surprising card game that led to a legendary friendship between Warren Buffett and Bill Gates. Berkus doesn't just tell us about the power of networks. He shows us how to activate and leverage that power. By blending theory with practical advice, friend of a friend serves as a guidebook for anyone ready to navigate the networked path to success. Whether you're looking to expand your business, increase diversity and innovation, or simply achieve your personal goals, understanding and utilizing your network could be your most strategic move. Part 1. Expanding Your Circle – The Surprising Power of Weak Ties There's a universal truth about friendship that we all cherish the profound bond and trust that comes with deep connections. Yet, when the landscape shifts from the personal to the professional, the rules of engagement change significantly. To excel in the workplace and in various aspects of our careers, it's time to examine our relationships through a different lens, one that values not just the depth, but also the breadth of our connections. 
contrary to our instinctual gravitation towards close-knit circles, the secret to enhance networking and innovation often lies in the realm of acquaintances or those with whom our connections are not as strong, our weak social ties. While it's human nature to turn to our closest allies when we're in need, especially in scenarios like job hunting, this strategy overlooks a crucial segment of our network that could be the key to unlocking new opportunities. Deep social ties form a cozy, interconnected web where information circulates within the same familiar loop. However, this redundancy limits the flow of novel information and opportunities. On the other hand, weak ties serve as bridges to diverse networks, carrying unique insights and opportunities across different social spheres. This principle was scientifically validated in 1970 by Mark Granovetta, a Harvard University student, who discovered that a whopping 83% of successful job seekers landed their roles through weak ties. His study illuminated the untapped potential residing in the periphery of our social circles. The magic of weak ties stretches beyond job hunting into the realm of innovation. In 2002, Martin Rueff, a Duke University sociology professor, embarked on a study involving 700 startups. His findings were compelling. Those startups that had consulted their weak ties while brainstorming business models were markedly more innovative. This was evidenced by a higher number of patent filings and the highly creative nature of their business models compared to those who relied primarily on their close networks. These weak ties introduced fresh perspectives, challenging conventional thinking, and fueling groundbreaking ideas. So, what does this mean for you? It's time to reimagine the value of the casual acquaintance, the former colleague, or the friend of a friend. These connections, often underestimated, could be the reservoirs of opportunity and innovation you've been searching for. By intentionally cultivating and nurturing these weak ties, you're not just expanding your network, you're diversifying your access to ideas, insights, and opportunities in ways that could redefine your path to success. Part 2. Bridging Worlds. How Unfamiliar Connections. Spark Innovation and Career Growth. Think back to the cafeteria scenes of high school, where everyone naturally gravitated towards their familiar clique, creating islands of exclusivity. This social tendency doesn't end at graduation. It follows us into adult gatherings, professional environments, and beyond. Yet, Stepping out of our comfort zones to engage with people from completely different circles is where the magic begins. It's in these connections with the unfamiliar that we find the seeds of innovation and career advancement. The tale of Sequoia, a Cherokee silversmith from the early 19th century, embodies this principle beautifully. Unlike most around him, Sequoia ventured beyond his native community to interact with American settlers. The Cherokee, at the time, had no written script. Inspired by the settlers' written communication, Sequoia embarked on a journey to create a syllabary, a set of written symbols representing syllables for the Cherokee language. His efforts were groundbreaking, leading to widespread literacy in his community and embedding this script into the fabric of Cherokee culture, a legacy that persists in places like Tahlequah, Oklahoma, Sequoia's story is more than a historical anecdote. It's a testament to the power of cross-cultural engagement. When we venture into the unknown and connect with those from different backgrounds, we open ourselves up to new ideas, perspectives, and innovations that would otherwise remain inaccessible. Moreover, the benefits of casting your networking net wide extend well beyond sparking innovation. It turns out that diversifying your connections can also propel your career forward, leading to higher salaries and more frequent promotions. This was illustrated in a study conducted by sociologist Ronald Burt in 2004, which observed 673 managers at a leading electronics company. Managers who sought insights from colleagues outside their immediate social clusters not only generated the most innovative solutions to improve supply chain management, but also occupied the highest paid and most prestigious positions within the company. The lesson here is clear. 
embracing unfamiliar territories and forming connections with those outside our usual orbit doesn't just enrich our personal and professional lives. It also acts as a catalyst for innovation, career growth, and success. So, next time you find yourself in a room full of strangers, see it not as a challenge, but as an opportunity to bridge worlds, just as Sequoia did, and watch as new doors of possibilities open before you. Part 3. Teamwork Transforms Innovation, The Power of Dynamic Collaboration Gone are the days when the image of a lone genius shouting Eureka from a secluded lab epitomized innovation. In the modern world, the creation of groundbreaking ideas and solutions is increasingly a team sport. This shift from individual to collective genius is reshaping how we approach innovation, moving us towards more collaborative, dynamic environments where ideas can truly flourish. A pivotal shift in the landscape of innovation was highlighted in a 2007 article by sociologist Brian Uzi in the journal Science. By analyzing a vast trove of over 20 million scientific studies spanning from 1955 to 2000, Uzi and his team unearthed fascinating trends regarding scientific collaboration and its implications for innovation. Back in 1955, the notion of the scientist working in solitude still held some truth, with the average scientific team comprising just 1.9 members. However, by the turn of the millennium, this figure had almost doubled to an average of 3.5 collaborators. This surge in team sizes corresponds with a greater emphasis on collaborative efforts in scientific discovery. Moreover, the nature of collaboration itself underwent a transformation during this period. Initially, A mere 17.5% of scientific papers' content was the product of collaboration, often with scientists working independently and collating their findings post-research. Fast forward to 2000, and this figure soared to 51.5%, indicating a paradigm shift towards genuine teamwork in the conceptualization and execution of scientific work. The influence of team-crafted papers also saw a notable increase. In 1955, papers authored by multiple scientists were cited by their peers 1.7 times more frequently than those researched individually. By 2000, this citation rate grew to 2.1, underscoring the growing academic and practical impact of collaborative research. Delving deeper into the dynamics of successful innovation teams, Udzi revisited the topic in 2005 to explore what precisely makes a team excel. Drawing from a sample of scientific studies published between 1955 and 2004, he discovered that teams comprising members who hadn't previously collaborated often produced work published in the most prestigious journals. Interestingly, teams that remained unchanged over time struggled to maintain their innovative edge, with their research often relegated to less prominent publications. While a concrete explanation for this phenomenon remains elusive, It's speculated that new team members inject fresh ideas and perspectives, rejuvenating the creative process in ways that more stagnant team configurations cannot. This evolving narrative of innovation, shifting from solitary ingenuity to collaborative brilliance, underscores the importance of fostering environments where reshuffling teams and embracing new collaborations can drive breakthroughs. It suggests that the key to unlocking the next wave of innovation lies not solely in the ideas themselves, but in the dynamic interplay of diverse minds coming together to challenge, inspire, and reimagine the possibilities. Part four, the snowball effect of networking, how initial connections fuel further growth. There's a fascinating principle found in the gospel according to Matthew, and it goes something like this, to those who have, more will be given. This concept, known as the Matthew effect in sociological terms, surprisingly extends its relevance into the realm of networking. The idea is simple yet profound. Having a network begets an even larger network. Imagine this process as a snowball rolling down a snowy hill. As it moves, it gathers more snow, growing in size. Similarly, when you start connecting with others, each new connection paves the way for more, creating a self-reinforcing cycle of networking growth. 
it makes sense when you think about it. In the social marketplace, individuals are naturally drawn to those who are well connected, perceiving them as valuable contacts who can open doors to more opportunities and connections. This phenomenon implies an encouraging message for anyone who finds networking daunting. Although building a network from scratch may seem challenging, the effort tends to yield exponential returns. As your list of contacts grows, so does the ease with which you can expand it further. The infectious nature of popularity within networks was underscored by an intriguing study by sociologists Matthew Salganik and Peter Dodds in 2006. They set up an experiment with a website that offered free music from unknown bands. Some versions of the site simply listed songs, while others also displayed how many times each song had been downloaded. The latter setup revealed a striking pattern. Songs that appeared popular became even more popular, illustrating how visibility and perceived popularity can dramatically influence choices within a group. In the context of networking, this translates to a clear advantage for those who are visibly connected. When others see you as a well-connected individual, you become a magnet for those seeking to expand their own networks. This visibility acts as a beacon, drawing in more connections and further cementing your status within the network. So, the next time you're hesitant to reach out and make a new connection, remember the snowball effect. With each contact you add, not only do you expand your network, but you also make it increasingly easier to attract even more connections down the line. In the world of networking, having connections is akin to having momentum. Once you start building it, the results can grow beyond your initial expectations. Part 5. From Networking Novice to Super Connector. The transformation is possible. Have you ever imagined what it would be like if one of your friends towered at a staggering height of 100 feet? Suddenly, calculating the average height of your group would leave everyone else feeling, well, a little on the short side. This amusing thought experiment illustrates a principle that also applies in the world of networking. When it comes to the size of our social circles, many of us might feel pretty connected until we compare ourselves to the networking giants known as superconnectors. These individuals, with their extensive lists of contacts, have the power to dramatically skew perceptions of what a normal network looks like. The advent of social media has only magnified the presence of superconnectors. A study in 2016 by two computer scientists from McGill University delved into the Twitter sphere, analyzing the followers and tweets of millions of users. Their findings highlighted the dominance of superconnectors, who boasted follower counts in the millions, making the average Twitter user's network, 155,657 followers, seem minuscule by comparison. However, before you resign yourself to obscurity in the shadow of these networking behemoths, consider this. Becoming a super connector is not a matter of fate or fortune. It's within your grasp. Take Tim Ferriss, for instance. Prior to launching his now iconic book, The 4-Hour Workweek, in 2007, Ferris was virtually unknown, lacking the vast network one might assume is essential for such a breakthrough. Yet, Ferris didn't let his initial anonymity deter him. Instead, he devised a strategic plan targeting his ideal audience, men aged 18 to 35 with a penchant for technology. Ferris meticulously identified the top 10 to 15 websites frequented by his target demographic and set his sights on their proprietors. He attended conferences, initiated casual chats that evolved into pitches, and soon found his book being championed across these influential platforms. The result? To the tech-savvy crowd, Ferris quickly appeared as a super connector, drawing waves of interest that catapulted his book to bestseller status and transforming him into a genuine networking powerhouse. This tale of strategic networking underscores a powerful truth. Becoming a super connector isn't about starting with the most extensive network. It's about intelligently growing your connections and strategically positioning yourself within key circles. Whether you're just beginning your networking journey or looking to elevate your existing connections, the path to becoming a super connector is paved with persistence, strategy, and a flair for engaging the right people at the right time. So, 
Take heart. The transformation from networking novice to super connector is not only possible, it's achievable with the right approach. Part six, breaking the mold. The challenge of achieving diversity in networking. It's a natural human tendency to gravitate towards those who resemble us in appearance, belief, or background. A phenomenon succinctly summed up by the saying, birds of a feather flock together. This inclination towards similarity is evident in various aspects of life, from the stark divisions in political affiliations to the friendships we forge. In essence, we are drawn to the comfort of the familiar, creating clusters of homogeneity that can inadvertently stifle diversity. Sociologists Duncan Watt and Georgi Kosinets provided empirical evidence of this tendency in a revealing study conducted in 2009. By meticulously tracking the email exchanges among students at a large American university, they crafted detailed profiles based on age, gender, and other attributes. Their findings revealed a clear pattern. Students were significantly more likely to communicate with peers who shared similar characteristics. This predilection wasn't arbitrary. It stemmed from shared social spaces, academic departments, and even specific courses, leading to a self-reinforcing cycle of homogeneity. The implications of such clustering are profound, especially when considering the goal of cultivating diversity. The case of Gimlet Media, a podcasting company founded by Alex Bloomberg and Matt Lieber, illustrates the real-world challenges of this phenomenon. In 2015, Bloomberg and Lieber observed that their team was predominantly white, liberal, and cosmopolitan a direct reflection of their recruitment pool within the New York-based journalism community. Recognizing the value of diversity, both in terms of enriching company culture and enhancing creativity, they acknowledged that achieving it would require intentional effort and a shift away from their existing recruitment strategies. This example serves as a potent reminder that fostering diversity in our networks and institutions isn't a passive process. It demands active, conscious effort. It challenges us to venture beyond the familiar, to seek connections with individuals from diverse backgrounds, and to embrace the richness that variety brings. As tempting as it may be to remain within our comfort zones, true growth and innovation lie in our ability to break away from the mold, to build bridges across differences, and to weave a tapestry of connections that is as vibrant and varied as the world around us. To thrive in an increasingly interconnected world, we must push against the natural inclination to cluster with like-minded individuals. By deliberately reaching out to and engaging with people from a broad spectrum of backgrounds, we not only enrich our personal and professional lives, but also pave the way for a more inclusive, diverse, and innovative future. Part 7. Connecting Through Activity the unconventional approach to networking. If the very thought of attending yet another social mixer fills you with dread or leaves you stifling a yawn, you're not alone. The good news, opting out of these conventional networking events might just be the smartest move you can make. It turns out that the traditional stand around and chat formula isn't just lackluster. It's also not particularly effective at fostering meaningful connections. This counterintuitive insight gained support from a study conducted in 2009 by Columbia University business professors Paul Ingram and Michael Morris. They set out to explore the dynamics of social mixers by equipping attendees, an assorted mix of students and business executives, with recording devices to monitor their interactions during an evening event on campus. Despite most participants professing a strong desire to meet new people, the data revealed a stark reality. A whopping 95% ended up spending half or more of their time mingling with individuals they already knew. Moreover, on the rare occasions when attendees did venture out of their comfort zones, they gravitated towards those mirroring themselves in background or profession. Hardly the recipe for expanding one's network. The findings underline a key networking challenge. Social mixers, by their nature, tend to reinforce existing connections and biases rather than forge new diverse links. Enter behavioral scientist John Levy and his distinctive take on how to truly connect with others. Levy masterminds dinner parties, 
but with a twist that transforms them into potent networking encounters. Guests at his New York abode find themselves randomly assigned to cooking teams, stripped of their usual identifiers like job titles and societal status. Anonymity levels the playing field, encouraging genuine interaction sans the usual hierarchy. The result is a collaborative effort where a simple meal preparation morphs into an engaging, laughter-filled session. The climax of the evening is a game where guests try to unveil each other's true identities, adding an element of mystery and fun to the affair. Levy's approach has not only redefined the networking experience, but also catalyzed lasting relationships, with guests often joining forces in creative and business ventures long after the dinner party ends. Levy's innovative networking model offers a compelling lesson. Shared activities create a powerful common ground that paves the way for authentic connections and collaborative possibilities. So, next time you're contemplating your networking strategy, remember that ditching the conventional mixer for a more dynamic, activity-based gathering could unlock doors you never imagined. Part 8. The Synergy of Friendships and Business. A Networking Power Duo. Who would have thought that a friendly game of bridge could be the catalyst for one of the most iconic business collaborations of our time? Yet, that's exactly how the friendship between Bill Gates and Warren Buffett, two titans of the business world, took root in 1991. Their story is a testament to the powerful synergy that can emerge when friendships evolve into business relationships. This interplay between personal connections and professional alliances was the subject of intriguing research conducted in 2009 by sociologists Simone Ferriani and Fabio Fonti. Delving into the business landscape of Bologna, Italy, they embarked on a mission to unravel the complexities of company networks. By mapping out both the business connections and the friendships among company leaders, Ferriani and Fonti discovered a significant overlap. When they probed further into which came first, business ties or personal friendship, they uncovered that friendships were twice as likely to lay the groundwork for future business partnerships compared to the reverse scenario. But what happens when the lines between friendship and professional relationships blur within the workplace? Management researcher Jessica Methot tackled this question in 2015 through a detailed study at a large insurance company. By examining the dynamics of work-related friendships, Method found that employees who counted their colleagues among their friends not only enjoyed higher performance ratings from their managers, but also experienced a deeper sense of motivation and job satisfaction. However, the story doesn't end there. Method's research also highlighted a caveat. While work friendships can turbocharge performance, they also come with an emotional toll. Maintaining these relationships demands emotional labor, leading to a certain degree of emotional exhaustion among employees with close workplace friends. Despite this, the overall picture remains overwhelmingly positive. The boost in performance attributable to the support and motivation derived from work, friendships more than compensates for the potential emotional fatigue. This insight reveals a crucial aspect of networking. The blending of personal and professional spheres doesn't just enhance our careers, it enriches our work experience, making the journey more rewarding. As we navigate the complex webs of our professional and personal lives, stories like that of Gates and Buffett, along with the findings of Ferriani, Fonti and Method, serve as powerful reminders of networking's multifaceted benefits. By fostering genuine connections, whether at the office or beyond it, we open doors to collaboration, innovation and growth proving that when it comes to networking, friendship, and business can indeed make a formidable pair. Final summary. At the heart of success, beneath the layers of skills and knowledge, lies the pivotal role of networks. While the notion of networking might conjure images of exchanging handshakes and business cards with strangers, the essence of building a meaningful network transcends mere conversations with the unfamiliar. It's an intricate process, one that demands a strategic approach to forging connections, not just any connections, but those that are diverse, 
enriching, and potentially transformative. Key to navigating this landscape is the understanding of weak social ties, those links that stretch beyond our immediate circle of close acquaintances to reach the unexplored territories of potential contacts. These ties, seemingly tenuous, are in fact the bridges to novel ideas, opportunities, and realms of collaboration that can ignite innovation and spur growth. By intentionally expanding our networks to include these weaker links, we open doors to a rich array of resources and insights that would otherwise remain beyond our grasp. Diversity within networks is another cornerstone of effective networking. As we venture into the realm of the unknown and connect with individuals from varying backgrounds and disciplines, we enrich our perspective and foster an environment ripe for creativity and breakthroughs. This, in turn, enhances team productivity, nurtures innovation, and sets the stage for groundbreaking collaborations. Furthermore, shared experiences serve as a powerful catalyst for cultivating stronger, more meaningful connections, activities that encourage collaboration and break down. Hierarchical boundaries can give rise to solid networks built on genuine interactions and mutual respect. Bypassing the superficial exchanges often found in traditional networking settings. Amid this tapestry of connections, the intersection of friendship and business emerges as a compelling dynamic. Friendships, seeded in shared experiences and mutual respect, can evolve into robust business partnerships, illustrating the seamless interplay between personal and professional relationships. Such alliances not only enrich the professional journey, but also underscore the multifaceted value of nurturing connections that blur the lines between personal camaraderie and business collaboration. In sum, the pursuit of networking is not merely about accumulating contacts, but about weaving a diverse dynamic web of connections that catalyze innovation, foster productivity, and transform casual acquaintances into colleagues and friends into partners. As we navigate the nuanced art and science of networking, let's remember that each connection, no matter how small or distant, holds the potential to spark change, inspire collaboration, and propel us towards success. Thank you for joining me today on this journey of learning and discovery as we explored the insights of another thought-provoking book in our growing library of knowledge. If you've enjoyed our time together, please take a moment to follow our podcast, give us a five-star rating, and share 20-minute books with other knowledge seekers. Your support truly means a lot. Don't forget to join me again in the next episode, where we will delve into another enriching book. Until then, happy reading and happy listening.